Okay, ladies, gentlemen. Welcome, welcome back. Uh, we have a 40-minute session this afternoon. Um, you should know the drill by now. We'll run through some presentations, um, and then we'll open up for a question and answer session. Um, the quality of the session is down to you and the quality of your questions. Um, we are recording this session, so please, if we can have um, questions through the microphone, Phil's here to assist us with that, so uh, away we go. Um, you heard from our minister this morning, uh, and from Alan Stevenson um, as well, about the, uh, the importance of plant health to us. Um, there was certainly a, an element of pride this morning from the minister, which I think is, uh, is very positive, and it's certainly a big feature of the Potato Council corporate plan. Um, it's a very important strategic objective for us. Um, so I'm delighted to be hosting this session. Um, and it is an international session. We've tried to stretch the geography as much as we possibly can for this one. Um, so we are looking at uh, both hemispheres uh, within the session. Um, we're going to look in a little bit more detail at some of the uh, regulatory, the quality assurance, and the, the diagnostic issues around um, plant health. And I've got two fantastic speakers here. Um, John Kerr's joined us from SASA. Um, he's head of uh, Potato Branch um, for SASA here in Edinburgh. So he's traveled three miles. Excellent. Um, Andy, how far have you traveled? A little bit further. Little bit further. Andy's joined us from uh, the New Zealand Institute uh, for plant and food research. So we're going to have a, a little counterpoint there. So um, without further ado, I will invite John um, to begin our session on keeping it clean and proving it. Okay, well, uh, thanks to Rob. And uh, I'd also like to thank uh, a former colleague of Rob's, Mark Prentice, who he phoned me up uh, and gave us this title, Keeping It Clean and Proving It. So it's my job today to tread uh, a fine line between talking about the UN standard for seed potatoes, but also giving you a flavour of how we make um, certification work in Scotland. So it's a global standard that we're talking about, uh, which any country within uh, the, the UN group of countries can uh, follow by adoption if they so wish. So it's not a compulsory standard, but it's there for anyone who wants to use it. Something not working. Okay, so uh, it started, uh, the work in this area started in 1963 to develop a global standard which would create a harmonised certification system throughout the world and we can maybe discuss a bit later whether we've managed to do that yet. Um, and then we would also within that standard define a harmonised quality of what we mean when we talk about seed potatoes. So the standard covers the things that you would think of, which is the varietal identity and purity of the seed lots, and also the genealogy and the traceability. So if you're um, growing Maris Piper potatoes and you sell it to somebody, then that's what should be in the bag. And basically those four things cover that aspect. Then of course, if you're talking about keeping it clean, the important thing is the diseases and pests. So we, uh, the standard sets out tolerances for diseases and pests. And I won't go into that in detail, I'm going to talk more in principle. We also look within the standard at external quality and physiology and sizing of tubers. And then the critical stage in terms of proving it is uh, the labelling of the seed potatoes at the end of the process. So that, that sets out the UN standard basically in its essence. Um, and then I want to say a few words about how we uh, approach that in Scotland. So uh, we, when we receive an application to grow seed potatoes, we check the origin of the stock. Um, so that's the mother plants have to be of the right quality. And we check that the identity of that lot is secure. And we've got a, quite a complex database system to control that, all that information. Um, and then these two elements here are about control of the actual growers. So the standard, the UN standard doesn't specifically address this explicitly, but we control the production sites for mini tuber producers, and we also control the competence of the pre-basic growers, so the very early generation producers. <coughs> then before any seed potatoes can be planted in the land, the UN standard makes reference to ensuring certain pests are not present in the land. And in Scotland, we go a little bit further than that, and I'll talk about that a little bit later on. Then, of course, 
the key thing is checking the crop health when, when the crop is being grown uh, and also the purity of it. So again, if it's Maris Piper, then there's not a whole bunch of Desiree plants all through it. And the separation is appropriate from other possibly lower quality crops. Then, of course, we check the lot health, so that's the tuber faults, uh, and again, verifying the identity and the labelling of the material. And then the standard also uh, makes reference to the fact, and in Scotland in particular, we are very strong on making sure that the overall plant health of the potato crop uh, is high. And in fact, if there's more than, if any crop, seed or wear potatoes in Scotland have more than 4% virus in them, we've got the powers to burn them down uh, within 72 hours of an inspection. So we've got pretty strong powers. And when Kevin was talking in his session yesterday, I really felt that they were in a different position to the one that we are in Scotland. And I felt quite thankful from our point of view and from the point of view of the industry that we have those controls. Okay, so here's a very complex slide, and I put it up deliberately for that reason. So here we see on the uh, left-hand side the, the UN scheme. So the UN scheme sets out um, three categories of seed, pre-basic, basic, and certified. And within those categories, there are uh, six classes, PBTCs, mini-tubers, then there's pre-basic, two classes of basic, and two classes of certified seed. Uh, and the rest are examples. This is the Scottish system, and you can see that we allow multiple generations within uh, certain uh, classes. This is the proposed European scheme, which we are currently discussing. Some controversy over elements of it. We might touch on that in the discussion. And uh, Andy very helpfully provide, provided the New Zealand situation. And I think as certifying authorities, in terms of proving it, we need more clarity than this type of situation. This is only four possible scenarios, and already it's very complicated. So I think for buyers, harmonization would be a really good thing. So just to say a word about the label colors, uh, within the UN standard and as practiced in Europe, uh, white labels, as you see here, are basic seed, and they should be capable of further multiplication as seed crops. Um, early generation seed has a white label with a diagonal purple line and certified seed comes on a blue label. So if you see seed carrying a blue label, it's really intended for end use production rather than further multiplication. So already the color of the label gives you some clarity of the quality that's in the bag. Okay, so all of the things that I've already discussed are basically how you have, you run any certification scheme. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's run by officials like in Scotland or done by growers as in other, other countries. So I wanted to talk about a, a few specific issues. Um, in Scotland, in terms of keeping it clean, you've got to first make sure that it started off clean. So uh, all the potatoes produced basically uh, of UK origin start as pathogen tested microplants in our collection at Sasa. So those of you who are coming on the seed tour tomorrow, I'll, I'll see a bit more about that. Um, but of course, it's also possible to do um, to select plants in the field that are healthy, do a little bit of testing to check that they really are healthy, and then re-enter them into your stock. So you can do a clonal selection process, and that's permitted within the UN standard, although it's not the, the practice in the UK. So from, from our official collection held at SASA, the um, plants then go to the uh, PBTC growers who produce mini tubers, and they take cuttings of those little plants uh, to produce large numbers of plants which are then planted in either peat or, in the case here, uh, aeroponics or hydroponics. So basically a pest-free medium, and uh, then they're grown either in glass houses or polytunnels, and in other countries where it's warmer, this is also done in screen houses. So you guarantee, well, you assure yourself that you've got a pest-free uh, growing situation. Now, the key thing that I wanted you to take from this slide is the fact that uh, these guys are the, the crux of the scheme. So this is the inspectors. So it's a visual scheme. So we look for symptoms in the field. So we're talking about virus diseases, black leg, and anything that isn't the variety growing in the crop. And that's by visual assess assessment. And the same is true of lot inspections. It's basically a visual system. Andy will talk later about diagnostics, but the certification scheme is principally based on visual symptoms. OK, but before we even get to the field stage, I mentioned that you control the soil, well, you control the land. And for Scotland, that means that the, the 
must be a field which has never had wart disease. And we also do a pre-planting test to check for freedom from potato cyst nematodes. And in Europe, we now have a harmonised uh, rule for how we do that. In Scotland, we have long rotations, although the UN standard is silent on this issue. But we've adopted seven years for pre-basic and five years for basic. And we also have separation requirements, which again, the UN standard doesn't go into any detail on that, but we require pre-basic growers to only grow pre-basic seed, and all seed on seed farms must be of at least elite quality or better. Then all crops are inspected twice in the field by a skilled inspector. And then, actually, the key thing from the point of view of this slide, the keeping it clean part is done by the growers and we are just the quality assurance. So we set the playing field, if you like, and then it's up to growers to make sure that, that they assure the quality. Um, so you can see here, at the back of the harvester, you've got uh, a member of the, of the grower staff taking out any problems as the crop's harvested. So the key thing, to my mind, of how you produce good seed is quality control at every step. Uh, there's a couple of other things I wanted to mention when this slide was up. One of them is that uh, look at how much soil there is in the field. Andy will talk about diagnostics, but look how much soil there is and think about that when you consider a soil sample. So that's something to bear in mind. Um, and the other thing is just to say that sometimes growing seed potatoes is a bit of an uphill struggle. <laughs> okay, there is one final step before we get to the marketing of seed potatoes. Many countries practice um, post-harvest testing. Um, and that's where the diagnostics really do play a part. So uh, all over Europe, uh, most countries are doing some form of post-harvest testing for virus. Um, and that can either be done by taking eye plugs, as you see here. Um, this is Henk's colleagues in the Netherlands, actually. Uh, and they're doing a grow out of these eye plugs and then probably an ELISA test diagnostic, um, although a PCR is also possible. And in some countries, at this stage, you can also screen for things like uh, ring rot to check that you're production system is free from quarantine organisms as well. Um, in Scotland, we like to think that our seed is of such high quality that we do not need to do this step, although we do test one variety routinely. And then the final step in the whole of the certification process is the, the tuber inspections. So here we see whether the grower managed to do all those quality control steps properly when we assess the lots. Um, for compliance with the tuber tolerances. And then the final part is making sure that what's on the label is what's in the bag and it meets the quality standard on the, of the class on the label. So that really is a whistle-stop tour of uh, potato certification within the UN scheme uh, with a flavour of how we do it in Scotland. So thank you very much for your attention. Um, if you're interested in uh, participating, then Sergey is your man. Uh, he's based in Geneva, or you can, you can contact me if you want to discuss it further. But thanks very much, and I'll hand over to Andy at this stage. Okay, thank you. <clears throat>